Hello folks! In the final part of this video series on the basics of shooting in manual mode, I'm going to talk about the ISO setting. This is the third setting which has a major effect on exposure, and you'll want to have a basic understanding of how ISO affects your images in order to get the results you want. So, now we know that larger aperture lets in more light, and a longer shutter time allows the light to be recorded for longer. The result of each of these is a brighter image but sometimes there still just isn't enough light to get the image bright enough without problems. Maybe you could use a three second shutter time in really low light to get a properly exposed image, but a lot can happen in three seconds and the sensor will record all of it. This can result in a blurry mess of an image unless the subject is stationary and the camera is on a very solid tripod. The good news is you have another tool at your disposal, ISO. ISO is essentially an amplifier for your camera's sensitivity to light. The higher you set your ISO, the more sensitive your camera's sensor is to light, and the faster it will record whatever amount of light is hitting the sensor. So a higher ISO setting will provide a brighter image at a given shutter speed and aperture setting. This can allow for greater flexibility in shutter speed and aperture settings. If you can't get a bright enough image without blur, try turning up your ISO and using a faster shutter speed. The result may be a bright enough image with less motion blur. But like the other settings, ISO doesn't only affect the exposure of your images. Turning up your ISO is basically turning up the gain on your sensor. Generally, the higher you turn up the ISO, the more digital noise you will introduce into the image. Some cameras are better than others at limiting noise at high ISO settings, but none are perfect, and all will experience some image degradation at increasingly higher ISO settings. With some cameras, the image quality drop can be quite severe at the highest ISO settings. So this means that there is a trade-off for higher ISO. Often though, this trade-off is worthwhile. A sharp, properly exposed image with a little noise grain might be a much more pleasing image than a dark shot with lots of motion blur from camera shake and movement of the subject. A higher ISO will brighten the image and can allow you to shoot in low light while maintaining shutter and aperture settings that give you the images you want but just be aware of the trade-off. If lighting is good, you may be able to get the shots you want without ever increasing the ISO, but ISO is a valuable tool in low light. It can also be used in good light to allow for extra fast shutter speeds to stop motion and to give sharp images of moving subjects. Keep in mind, some cameras can produce very clean images at relatively high ISO, but play around with various settings on your camera and get a feel for how it affects your final images. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Those are the main settings you'll want to be familiar with in order to start shooting in manual mode. Even after some practice, it's easy to miss a shot because you forget one setting or another and end up with a ruined shot. But at the very least, you should be able to evaluate your image and make the needed corrections. Too bright? Maybe you just need to increase the shutter speed. Too dark? Maybe slow the shutter down. Exposed well, but too much motion blur? Try increasing the shutter speed to prevent the blur, and then just adjust the aperture or ISO to get the exposure back to where you want it. Too little depth of field? Close down the aperture a bit, and maybe change the ISO setting to compensate for the change in exposure. With practice, these things will become second nature. You'll be able to look at your images and decide what setting to change to get the desired result on the next shot. So just practice, and it'll come to you. Keep in mind, all these adjustments are finite. There's only so much you can do to get proper exposure. Some lighting situations are very tough on a camera, and sometimes you'll find that you just can't tweak the settings enough to get perfect shots. There's a reason flashes and other artificial lighting are often used even outdoors in sunlight, and filters are sometimes used to reduce lighting. So camera settings alone aren't always enough to achieve a certain look. But Hopefully these videos will give you a basic idea of how the exposure set settings of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO work to give you the results you want. And maybe you'll feel a bit more confident shooting in manual mode. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer if I can. Thank you for watching. Take care.